talk to another day to you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're going to do a little show and tell session on my method of starting a chainsaw. 99% of the time, there's no decompression valve left in the engine. We're doing some tweaking and things run a little bit different than stock form. My background was a kind of an interesting process, but back when I first started cutting down trees with chainsaws they didn't actually come with chain brakes so that's just a little side note me personally I like the drop method um, I've seen people put the pistol grip in between their legs and try to start it that way that's okay me personally in a production application this is the shortest bar I've ever used that would be a 28 and that's when you're in a bunch of trash um, a lot of times it's overkill or could be overkill on the diameter side but you get in situations on yarder ground out in the west coast where it's a bucking problem. I've cut units where you could have been following them with a 28 but you're running a 32 because you're way too close when you're bucking those trees so you run a long bar so you can get away from them. Anyway, kind of segue off on stuff because sometimes things pop into your head from way back when they're in the cobweb section at this point but anyway um, I've also seen where people will put the saw on the ground and bend over and start it I don't like that method either personally I think that's hard on your body and I'm always talking from a personal level in this I don't I'm not bashing anybody I don't care what anybody else does I'm just showing you what I do and I'm gonna talk about why I do it first of all you out on the west coast you a guy is going to be running a long bar more often times than not and so there's a weight factor that's involved in that situation there's more weight um, the worst place for you to be with your back is about 10 to 12 degrees canted forward I like to stand straight up I don't put the chain brake on necessarily and a lot of times though what I'll do is I'll have it in the off position with the choke on I might crank it one or two or three times just depends um, and then I'll turn it on and then I'll light it off because a lot of times they start easier the other side of that equation which is critical is you need to have your hand on the trigger I think a lot of people don't understand that part of it they start much easier when there is flow going through the process in review we have three different styles of starting that I know about on a conceptual level one style that I know about as a user we have the drop method which I'm going to show you in a second we have the straddle method which I'll sh give a demonstration on that as well and then you have the hurt your back method where you have a saw that's completely down on the ground and you're trying to start it with your foot in the pistol grip well on the bottom of the tank essentially below the pistol grip so we'll take a couple look sees at what that entails but I can guarantee you with this saw right here with this length of bar which that's a 72 you're not going to be doing the straddle method and I don't know why anybody would put that thing on the ground to try to start it and then try to pick it back up again coming from a bushels background you're trying to do things in an expedient fashion putting that thing the power head alone fully fueled weighs 24 pounds you're talking there's 40 45 pounds of operation right there since there's 199 drivers of 404 chain on that bar you're not going to be helping your back out at all trying to put it on the ground start it then pick it back up again. so there's probably technically a couple variations of the drop start the variation that I didn't really look into that much because I don't particularly use it necessarily we'll take a look at that one too so essentially same kind of a concept you have to get it in the on position and so you're probably going to want to put the chain brake on before you start it I don't necessarily do that method but that's just the way I've been around saws for a long time 
Choke is on. want to take a look at the straddle method of starting your saw we're going to make sure that the chain brake is actuated we're going to get the choke out we're going to put the pistol grip in between your legs kind of like this and you're going to yard on the handle with a pull starter rope Now that method works pretty good when you have a decompression valve and they're in stock form. When they're in zip form and they don't have a decompression valve, you're going to find yourself having to yard on that handle pretty hard. One reason why I like the West Coast drop style starting, personally. I'm going to talk about the bend over and hurt your back method. We'll take a look at that with the 460. I like to have something out there to put my um, tip of my bar on personally if I'm going to do it like that which I never do but I just thought about that in concept I would want to do it that way you're going to want to make sure and engage the chain brake as well in this situation so we verify the chain brake is on foot goes in between the pistol grip and the tank essentially you bend over put your hand on the handlebar That started up nicely, actually. I was surprised. Sometimes you might have to choke them, so you might have to take a couple pokes at them. I don't particularly think that's the best method um, because you're trying to pick that weight up with your back, essentially. Now we'll take a look at my personal 281 with a 42 inch cannon. So the power head is coming in around 18 and a half or something like that. I mean, I'm thinking that you could probably straddle start that, and you could obviously put it on the ground and start it, but it's starting to become problematic to do the anything but the West Coast style is what I call it, drop method, I guess, drop start. So basically, you have your bar supported out on something, whatever it might be, something solid. You can choke it. Now there's a lot of leverage happening with that 42 inch bar and it didn't take much because I was utilizing the weight of the engine against itself while I was starting it. Um, it takes less effort in my humble opinion to do it that way. It's safer from my perspective when you're dealing with the long bar because it's out there away from your body and it's just easier on your back. So now we're going to take a look at the 084 using the West Coast method because I'm not going to put it on the ground and try to pick it up with my back and I'm not going to try to straddle it because that would be uh, problematic I think.
then we noticed too that I used the engine the throttle a little bit to pull that bar over here off of that other log and so that's just another west coast thing a guy would do sometimes I don't know, you spend hours and hours and days and years on the end of a pistol grip, you kind of get to a certain place with what you like to do, and I'm always trying to make it easier for myself, personally. So I was noticing while I was starting this saw with the 72 inch long bar on it, that it's a little flexy, even though it looks like a Chinook salmon because of the belly. Little flexy. And I thought to myself, in the ongoing and never ending saga of R and D, if the West Coast version where you have the tip supported because you're dealing with the long bar and the ground isn't anything like what we're standing on right here, um, flat as a pancake and no brush, if it would be any more stable if you supported the tip out on whatever it might be and did the straddle type method of holding the pistol grip in between your legs. I just kind of had wondered that on a personal level. So I think we're going to give that a whirl here now. Not good. Not on a ported saw, even one with a compression release that's engaged. Seems to be a little more stable, but you can't overpower the pop necessarily. I thought that was kind of an interesting concept. Thought I might give it a try and see if it's any better. It's a little less flexy, that I will say. We watched, even with the compression release engaged, it was coming up pretty tight. It's a lot easier to keep the engine or get the engine spinning using the weight of the engine against itself as you're pulling with the opposite hand on the starter rope from what I found. Kind of just wanted to take a look at that on a personal level and see. Now it might be different if you're running a saw that's completely stock. Um, they don't have anywhere near the compression and that's we kind of saw it was a little bit of a problem right there. If we want to take a look at the process a little closer of what I was talking about initially with the 357, essentially, if a person can crank these over once or twice with the choke on and the switch off, which a lot of sides they don't allow that, it seems like it helps the process because you're getting some fuel in there. Uh, like a pretty decent amount of fuel with some air charge if you will so what I'll do is I will have the throttle fully depressed while I'm cranking on it in any part of the process and you'll find that they'll actually crank over a lot easier and start better from what I've found in my experience working with saws in a lot of different decades I prefer putting the tip out on something and using the weight to work against itself, pushing, essentially you're pushing down on the pistol grip while you're pulling up with the starter cord. So the motion is like collectively you're working each side against itself. the 
West Coast version drop method. And again, basically you want the trigger wide open, wide open throttle when you start them like that, and they'll start way easy. Well, we were able to take a couple views on some different starting methods, and I kind of explained why I prefer the drop start method, west coast method, whatever. It just makes sense from a logistics point of view based on it's easier to get it started, it's easier on your body. So anyway, thanks for watching this session. Have a blessed day wherever you might be on God's green earth.